Um, oops, we've gone right to the end. Let me start that from the beginning. Uh, okay, so um, what we wanted to go through today um, was the hotel school advantage. Um, I wanted to speak a little bit about our transition to online study. Um, and then I'm going to hand over to Sam and she's going to talk to you a little bit about our programs and, and some of the scholarship options. Uh, so, um, as Wayne's already introduced us, my name's Tim, I'm the Head of International Sales at the Hotel School and Sam is our Regional Manager, um, covering onshore Melbourne, offshore Singapore, Malaysia, Taiwan, Philippines. Right? Yes, I think. I keep, we keep changing Sam's markets, so it's a little bit hard to remember. Um, okay, so what I wanted to, to talk to you about, first of all, is, is address the elephant in the room, is to um, talk a little bit about COVID-19 and its impact on the industry. So what I wanted to talk about was what, what's happened in our industry, hotel and tourism industry, pre-COVID-19, what's, what's sort of happened now, and then where's our road to recovery? Um, so if we, we look back, a few months ago, um, before this pandemic struck, uh, the hotel and tourism industry was um, experiencing an unprecedented period of growth. Um, for a very long time, it had been growing substantially uh, globally. Uh, and that meant that there were amazing opportunities for students who had um, studied in this particular area. There were amazing opportunities because there was such demand for people with the right education, the right experience to fill uh, quite high level positions within the industry. Then COVID-19 happened um, and that put a pause on that growth. Um, and unfortunately, um, some people have lost jobs um, and the industry has sort of stopped, it ground to, ground to a halt very quickly. Um, what we're seeing now um, is the early signs of, of the recovery, particularly here in Australia where we've managed the pandemic quite well. Um, we are seeing an easing of restrictions already. So cafes, restaurants, um, hotels, pubs uh, are opening back up for smaller capacity um, uh, from next Monday in my own state. So this is the, the first part of the recovery. Um, and then the plan is for interstate borders to be open by July. So with that, that'll bring an influx of um, domestic tourism, domestic business travel. So airlines will pick back up, hotels will pick back up. It'll be a boost to the, the restaurant and the hospitality industry to tourism operators. Uh, so that'll be, uh, there'll be a, a big push to get people back into employment, starting from now, um, going sort of all the way through that first wave of the recovery. Uh, in the second wave of the recovery, we will open select international borders. Um, and that will again bring in some international um, tourism, some international business travel. Um, so we anticipate that the industry will be back pretty healthy um, before the end of the year. Uh, so there's gonna be a lot of people who are fighting for those jobs. And our students, our graduates will be in a unique position because as I'll explain to you later in this presentation, uh, we actually own uh, our own hotels and not just some little three-star hotels we own big, big brands like Intercontinentals um, are part of our group, part of the hotel school. So our students are going to be in a unique position. So the message, I guess, for um, new students uh, who you might be talking to um, is that there is going to be opportunities again. There will be career opportunities. Um, that's what we're all about at the hotel school. Um, we have some good rankings and things like that, but our main focus is about getting students into a successful career. Um, and that's what we are confident that we uh, will continue to be able to do um, post COVID. Um, I don't want to speak about this for too much time. I just wanted to, to talk on a couple of quick points here. Um, career opportunities. So we are the hotel school. So people associate us with hotel management, obviously. Um, hotel management means different things in different countries. So in certain countries, hotel management and cooking are all in one. Um, just to let you know, we don't offer any culinary programs. We're not a cooking school. Um, you can do food and beverage management uh, through us. So there is that side of things, rooms, division, front office, those typical hotel management areas. 
We also look at event management, hospitality, tourism, again, pretty standard areas. The, the point that I wanted to make here is the business side of things. So we do offer business qualifications at an undergraduate and a postgraduate level. Um, so they're business qualifications focused on the hotel, tourism and hospitality industry. We have as many students who want to work in sales and marketing, human resources, uh, revenue and yield management, accounting, finance, as we do that want to work in food and beverage, front office, um, event management, those areas. So if you have students who are interested in um, starting a career in business, we can actually offer them a business qualification that leads to positive employment outcomes. Uh, so I think that's something really important to, to be aware of um, is that they can come and study business, they can start a career in business, and it doesn't have to be in the hotel industry. They can go off and work in banks, they can go off and work in Microsoft. There's a whole range of different career outcomes because we do offer business calls. Sam will talk to, to you a little bit more about that later in the presentation. Our main point of difference, our, our biggest advantage um, stems from who we are. So we are a unique partnership between industry and education. So we are 50% owned by Southern Cross University, a public Australian university. Um, it's a young university, um, but an up and coming university. Uh, and the other side, the other 50% is owned by a company called Molfa. Now you might not have heard of MOLFA, um, but MOLFA is a massive organisation. Our turnover last year was $12.5 billion. Um, and you certainly will have heard of some of the properties um, that MOLFA has in its portfolio. So that unique value proposition means we are the only hotel school in the world jointly owned by a five-star hotel investor and a public university. It's the perfect recipe, right, for students because students come to us to study, they want to get a degree that will be recognised worldwide. Um, they get that because it's a public university degree. But their main aim is to get that education and then to start a career. And we can give them a start in their career because we can employ our own students. So our tagline is study with us, work with us. The full circle. These are some of our properties. We own the Intercontinental in Sydney. Um, just back from Circular Quay. We own the Intercontinental Hayman Island, luxury resort island in the Whitsundays. We own the Intercontinental Sanctuary Cove, which has a big marina, a big golf course. Uh, we own Bim Pageant, which makes some amazing wines, but it's also a big events destination, big concerts. And we have a couple of properties um, in, the, in the mountains. And then we own properties internationally as well. So we own the Marriott in London. Uh, we own Sofitel in Paris. Uh, we own um, the biggest soft hotel in the world, which is the soft hotel in the Philippines in Manila, right there on Manila Bay. Uh, we own the Novotel uh, in Hong Kong, and we also own an Ibis uh, in Hong Kong. So we have uh, a big range of hotels, and all of those hotels need employees. That's why Malfa bought into this business, because they want to have some input in how they're developing employees and then they want a source of, of new employees for their properties. On the education side of things, Southern Cross University um, is, is quite famous for a couple of things. Um, first of all, for their international support. So as a young university, they understand the value of international students um, and we offer amazing support um, to, to help those students to progress. The other thing that they're very famous for is for tourism and leisure management, which just happens to be the one area of their, um, their course offerings that we teach in. So they were ranked number 34 globally in last year's academic ranking of world universities for the area that we teach in. Uh, they are rated five stars in tourism and hospitality in the Good Universities Guide. Um, where uh, they are number one for educational experience, number one for learning resources, number one for graduate employment, and number two for teaching quality. So all of these things showcase um, that we are a, a part of a, a really good public university. Um, quickly to take you through our advantage, um, we are the first ever hotel school in Australia. So we're the old, oldest hotel school um, starting in 1989 in Sydney. Um, we offer paid internships as part of our undergraduate and our postgraduate programs. So these give students an opportunity to gain some international work experience at a famous hotel, 
but they also give the students an opportunity to earn a really good salary. And I'll talk to that later in the presentation. Um, we have unique industry connections. Uh, they really are unique um, because we are a major hotel investor. We can open doors that hotel schools simply can't. Um, CBD locations, we're located right in the centre of Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane. I'll show you that later on. Um, excellent global community. So we don't have one huge um, nationality of, of, you know, one big percentage of nationality from one particular country. We've got a real diverse spread of students from all over the world, including about 50% um, local Australian domestic students. And as I mentioned before, we offer a public university degree. So what did we do when COVID-19 struck and we had to move everything to an online space? Um, part of that transition was very easy because we are part of a public university. Our course was designed, our curriculum was designed for asynchronous teaching and learning. So that meant that the academic side transitioning that to an online space was easy. The students were already used to, to working in our learning management system, Blackboard, which I'll show you later on. Um, and they already had access to all the resources that they needed for that particular course in there. What we had to work very hard to do is we're not just an academic school. We provide an amazing level of support and extracurricular um, uh, activities for our students um, in the way of professional development. So our professional learning centre, PLC, is, is one of the most important teams at the hotel school. And it's their job to prepare our students for the industry. It's their job to connect our students to the industry. So they run a lot of workshops in terms of developing a personal brand. They look at things like putting together a professional resume, CV. They do you know, guest um, mock interviews, things like that. Um, so we moved all of their activities to an online space as well. They also organised for guest speaker presentations. So we've been able to move them to Zoom. We had um, the Director of Human Resources for Hyatt in Sydney come and spoke to our students last week. And we continue to run that, that particular program because it gives the students an opportunity to learn from industry professionals. We also appreciate that now is a particularly difficult time to be an international student. So we've increased the, the number of hours and um, the uh, access to our student counselling service and made that available online. Our student association is one of our key uh, vehicles for engagement with our students. Um, and they've made sure that the students are still having a good time through pajama parties, Netflix, movie nights, um, parties, quizzes, a whole bunch of fun stuff that we're doing with the students. This is just a quick snapshot. It shows you Blackboard, our learning management system, where students can access all of the resources that they need um, to complete the academic studies. The lectures are still happening um, in the same mode as face-to-face, -face, so the students still follow the same timetable. They still have lectures, they still have tutorials, they still have access to our academic staff, um, and that will continue through session two, even for offshore students. So they will still get all of the extra support that they need um, uh, to, to work their way through. It's not a traditional online learning style or, or mode of delivery. Um, it's not an independent learning style. We're still here to support the students and help them progress through the course. You can see a few happy faces, things like Friday happy hours and happy students studying there. Um, we're using social media a lot to, to talk to our students and talk to them about the resources that are available to assist them. Um, just to let you know, for our existing students, we have a hardship fund which has been made available to um, all of the students who apply for it. Um, to help them out with the cost of living if they've lost jobs due to the current pandemic. Um, we also have a hardship scholarship which will be available for existing students who re-enrol in session two. So we're, we're trying to support our students um, through this difficult time because we understand the value um, of our international students and we want to try and support them. Everything that we've done in terms of migrating basically the entire campus to an online platform um, has been done in a really seamless way. Um, speaking to our students, they're very happy. Everything's just worked, which is great. Um, attendance has gone up at our lectures. We've seen a greater level of engagement and our attrition rate has actually significantly reduced, which is amazing. Um, I'm gonna show you the three campuses where we're located. So first of all, Hotel School um, Sydney, our first campus um, is about 400 metres from Circular Quay, surrounded by all of these hotels. Um, we surrounded ourselves by these hotels because we want 
um, students to have access to, to, to work part time in these hotels. That's very important for us. We know that international work experience is really valuable. So we connect them with part time employment close by the campus so they can come in, go to class and then go and work their 20 hours um, close by. Same in Melbourne, we're in a very central location. Um, only five minute walk to Central Station in the free tram zone, um, surrounded by some of the, the top properties in Melbourne. Same in Brisbane on Creek Street there. Um, again, five minute walk from the Central Station, surrounded by all of these hotels. Um, students in Brisbane also have access to some of the tourism and hospitality providers on the Gold Coast as well. Um, Everything that we do is about preparing students for jobs, for industry. This is how we measure our success, is how many of our students receive, um, get into successful employment after completion of the course. So we have a range of guest speakers, guest um, industry professionals, um, delivering classes, um, mock interviews are done with HR directors, with F&B directors, front office directors, people who are actually from the industry who employ people so they can give real feedback to our students, put the students in a bit of a higher pressure environment rather than just having an interview with our academic staff. Um, so there's uh, a lot of things that we do around job ready practical training. Um, opportunities for paid internships. Uh, the, the main reason for the, the, the internships is to give them work experience, but an added bonus is they get paid very well. So the starting salary for our internships is over $26 an hour, which is amazing, which means that um, with our bachelor degree or with our masters, where the minimum requirement for internships is 600 hours, uh, they earn over $15,000. Uh, we know most of our students will do significantly more hours than that, um, so uh, in, a, in a lot of cases earn over $20,000 through the internship. Plus, as I mentioned, we help connect them with part-time work in the industry as well. So there's a, an excellent opportunity to earn and Sam will show you what that looks like when we go through the fees. Uh, we offer overseas and MOLFA internships. Um, what I mean by MOLFA internships are at a head office. Uh, so we offer internships in things like public relations, sales and marketing, human resource management, if you are selected for a multiple internship, it normally means that they want to hire you full time. So um, that can be an exciting opportunity for our students. Last year, we made over 10,000 employment opportunities available to our students through our own job portal. Um, so these are jobs that have been curated and selected by our PLC team to present to our students. We only had about 1,000 students last year, so there was over 10 job opportunities for each student. That led to some amazing graduate employment statistics. Um, we had 95% graduate employment within six months of graduation. This is across domestic and international students and almost 70% were in full-time employment before they had finished. I'm um, speaking with one of our Filipino students uh, last week. She mentioned that she'd received three or four job offers before she'd even completed the course. Um, and she selected the one that wanted to sponsor her to get PR to stay in Australia, and, and that's what she's doing at the moment. So, um, and that's not an uncommon thing. Students all are in demand. Um, as I said, we'd like them all to work for our hotels, but um, unfortunately, we need to give students options, and, um, and they are in demand from all over the industry. We've got a free graduate placement service. Um, we can help students get a job up to 12 months after graduation. Okay, um, at this stage, I would like to hand over to Sam and she's going to talk you through um, our courses. So over to you, Sam. Yeah, thank you, Tim. Um, so um, I just want to um, recap on what um, Tim mentioned earlier on. So the, just to show you a snapshot of our courses um, at the hotel school. Yeah, the first thing that I want to emphasize is um, the hotel school, um, as what Tim mentioned earlier, we are half jointly owned by Southern Cross University and jointly owned by a very big global in hotel and investment company. So uh, first thing to note is that when students graduate from the hotel school, um, they do get um, a graduation certificate from Southern Cross University. So it's 100% from Southern Cross University. So um, the first course that I want to share with you is the Diploma of Hotel Management. So this is a one year course where students will study eight subjects. Um, first thing to note is that it is not a vocational diploma. 
So it is not a VET diploma. In fact, it's a higher education diploma and it is actually a pathway to our bachelor's. So um, students will need to have completed uh, Australian year 12 or equivalent to join the diploma. So for example, um, if you have a student in um, uh, wherever, for example, Malaysia, who has already done um, a diploma or who has finished their year 12, but they can't meet their entry requirements to go into the first year of bachelor's degree, then instead of wasting time to do extra year to do a one year foundation program, this is where we could offer them to study a one year diploma plus two years of bachelor's. So by doing the one year of diploma, it's, it's almost equivalent to doing the first year of bachelor's. So it is a pathway to immediately to the second year of bachelor's. And the second uh, in the bachelor's, I will tell you a little bit, there is also a six months internship. So they get to do one year diploma plus two years bachelor's, including the six months internship. So the next course is the Bachelor of Business in Hotel Management. This is really one of our um, you know, staple programs. Um, Bachelor of Business is a three years program where students will study eight subjects per year. So um, IELTS requirement is 6.0, no band less than 5.5. There are so many bachelor courses um, in Australia, uh, everywhere, every university has a Bachelor of Business course, nearly. Some of them is called Bachelor of Commerce. You know, it doesn't matter, it's business course. So what is it that makes our bachelor course so different from the other um, similar business courses out there in the market? Well, the first and most outstanding thing is that our bachelor includes six months work internship. Okay, So in this six months work internship, um, students can work full time without any work limitations. Um, as you all probably know, students who are on a, a student visa can't work more than 20 hours a week in Australia. But because this uh, internship is part of our degree, so students can work full time. Um, as Tim uh, showed us in the slide earlier, our students can easily earn at least 15,000 Australian dollars in that six months alone. So this is much, this is even more than half the year's tuition fees. Um, the internship can be done in the second year or it can be done in the third year as well. So students will work full time for six months. Another outstanding thing about um, the Hotel School Bachelor of Business in Hotel Management is the fact that um, we have a compulsory subject in the first semester that we teach students only one thing. And that is like we teach students from A to Z how to prepare themselves to get the job they want. I've spoken to so many counsellors in so many um, different countries that I, I, I've looked after. And so far, not a single person can tell me there is another university offering a compulsory subject where we teach the students everything from how to write a very outstanding CV, cover letter, interview skills, interview tips, presenting with confidence, and even a mock interview. So where we bring in actual human resource managers to do a one-to-one -one interview with the students and students will be accessed and given a, a very detailed feedback on how they perform you know, during this mock interview. It is really that powerful, um, this, this particular subject where we teach in the first semester. And it is a Bachelor of Business degree. So 60-70% um, of the subjects, they're all business related. So this is actually a springboard to reach into careers um, like marketing, um, you know, um, public relations, uh, uh, accounting and finance, for example. It's a really, really good um, bachelor's uh, business degree, but it also opens up the door for other career opportunities in tourism and the global hotel industry as well. So um, again, if you have a student um, who has already maybe completed um, a diploma in the home country or or they have done, they started a bachelor's and they're looking to transfer, um, just reach out to your YES education manager, um, you know, and it's possible for your students to apply for credit exemption of, of understanding into our bachelor's. Uh, the next course, uh, which is a postgraduate course, is the Graduate Certificate of Business in Global Hotel Leadership. 
So this is a six months course uh, where students will study four subjects. Um, again, this is, course is a pathway to our master's program. So the IELTS requirement is a bit lower. So if you have students who can't meet the direct entry uh, requirements for IELTS into our master's, um, they can possibly do this six months um, of graduate certificate first, and then they just need to do another one and a half years um, for the master's course. Um, the next course is the Graduate Diploma of Business in Global Hotel Leadership. This is, again, um, it's a postgraduate course. It's one year. Um, there is no internship component in this course it, itself. But again, this course is really like a pathway to our master's also. So it can be done um, if students don't want to commit to two years um, of a master's course. They certainly can do this one year graduate diploma as well. But um, let me give you an example. So for a student who wants to join the master's and let's say they take IELTS, they can't meet overall 6.5. They only can get 6.0 overall, no band less than 5.5. Um, instead of having to do uh, spend money to study additional weeks of English, these students can actually study one year of the first year in graduate diploma. When they finish, they will directly go into the second year of master's. All in all, it's still one plus one. So the total study duration is still two years. And after the students graduate, they still can apply for the two years post-study visa. And they still get to do the six months internship in the master's as well. So um, the master's, we only have one master's at the hotel school. It's called the Master of Business in Global Hotel Leadership. So this master's course um, was the hotel school launched this master's course um, at the beginning of this year in February 2020. So this master's course was, has been developed with the industry. So when I say industry, so the hotel school's academic team had formed a committee with um, the key stakeholders from in industry, such as, uh, for example, the finance manager from the Intercontinental Hotel, the human resource manager from Sofitel, so we form a committee with um, these key stakeholders and ask them what are sort of the skills, knowledge and attributes are you looking for when you are hiring um, graduates to work in the management positions in your global hotel chains. So with that feedback, we develop this course and it's such a powerful master's course. So because um, it is the, the way I would summarize this course, it is like an MBA. So if you look at the subjects again, um, it's very, very similar to an MBA, but it's so much more powerful than an, an MBA because um, we, do get the, we do get guest lecturers from the industry to deliver some of the subjects. So for example, a finance manager from Intercontinental Hotel could be delivering one of the subjects in accounting or yield management. We could get a human resource, a senior human resource director from Sofitel to deliver one of the subjects in talent and culture. Okay. The most amazing part about our Masters of Business is the fact that it has six months internship. So six months internship, the students can do it usually in the second year. So the master's course is two years when the, and the student will normally do the internship in the second year for six months. And I would like to say two things. So um, there is, as far as I know, there's no other public university master course that has a six months embedded internship. So it's really, uh, really powerful. Um, and it's very, um, it includes a lot of practical learning. So once student finish the internship, they can go on immediately to their post-study work, right? You know, without really having to um, change jobs. They can even stay in the same job. So um, next course. Oh, uh, next course is the, um, yeah. Oh, sorry, Tim, you might want to mention about, about the online courses, um, the online delivery. Yeah, thanks. Sure. <clears throat> so um, we've got a couple of options um, in, in terms of um, online delivery. So all of our programs uh, will be available to commence online from session two. Um, and students can let us know whether they want to complete the entire course online or whether they want to start online and then come down to Australia. 
So um, courses that are available um, solely online are our diploma um, and then all of our post-grad options. So grad cert, grad dip and masters. So they can be completed 100% online. Um, for the other courses, they can all be commenced online and then come down to Australia when the borders open up. Uh, so um, the online delivery will be a fully supportive mode. As I mentioned, um, students will have a timetable, they'll go to lectures, they'll have access to ask questions to the tutors, um, small class sizes, group work with students from all over the world. So it's a great way for students to, to use some of this downtime um, during the pandemic to, to, to do a couple of units. Um, they can do a couple of units at undergrad or postgraduate level. They can meet their classmates, so they already know people when they come down to Australia. They can meet their lecturers, they can meet um, uh, all of the staff from the hotel school. So it'll make the transition when the borders do open back up. It'll make that, that process of coming down to another country in Australia a, a lot easier. So we really encourage um, students, we're offering some um, special incentives for them to come into session two. Uh, so yeah, we, we really encourage you to, um, uh, to, to give this option to your students. Um, the, 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 the last program that we have here is um, uh, quite a special program. So I wanted to explain this one um, uh, to you guys myself. We call it the International Hotel and Tourism Management Program or IHTMP for short. It's a little bit of a mouthful. Um, you'll notice that it is not a diploma, it is not a degree, it's called a program. Um, and the reason that it's called a program is because it doesn't fit neatly under the Australian Qualifications Framework. Uh, it is being classified as a non-award qualification. It still has CRICOS, we still accept international students. It's massively popular with international students. Um, this program, what it actually is, it's a Swiss diploma. So we know that Switzerland is at the forefront of hospitality education. It's where it all started. The first ever hotel management school, Ecole Hotelier Lausanne, was started over 100 years ago. Um, and it's really, really famous. But it's super expensive and um, students don't have access to, to live there or work there. The languages spoken aren't English outside of the campus. So it's quite a difficult destination for international students. So what we've done is we've brought this Swiss diploma and we're delivering it in Australia. So you get the best of both worlds. Um, HTMI is actually uh, ranked number 17 in the QS rankings um, that were for this year, for 2020. So they were the biggest mover on that QS rankings for hotel and tourism. So this is a real top quality Swiss school. And the qualification that the students receive, they'll get a bit of paper from Southern Cross saying, yep, you've completed this program but they'll also get a diploma from HTMI, top 20 ranked hotel schools saying, yes, you've completed this qualification. The entry requirements for the course are pretty much the same as our diploma. Um, it's a little bit different. Our diploma is a one year course. This IHTMP program is a two year course, but it does have 10 months of paid internship as part of that. So in year one, students will do um, approximately five months of paid internship, same in year two. Um, with those internships, we actually have a specific partnership for this program with Accor Hotels. Uh, so Accor Hotels is, I think, currently the third largest hotel group in the world. They have brands like Sofitel, Novotel, Mercure, Pullman, um, a whole bunch of these um, brands under their umbrella. So our students will get to do paid internships with um, a core properties. Now, because it's a non-award course, it doesn't give students any access to post-study work rights. Um, but our solution to that is, is to create a pathway into our bachelor degree. So students can, if they want to, um, do this as a standalone qualification, a standalone two-year course. But if they wanted to, they could package it with the bachelor degree. So they could do two years of the IHTMP, two years of the bachelor degree. That gives them two years of a, um, uh, an, uh, an award qualification, which would allow them to apply for post-study work rights at the end of the course. Um, what I wanted to share, Sam's gonna talk a little bit about the fees in a second, but I just wanted to share because it is one of the key selling points of this program, is the price point. 
The price for this qualification is only $15,000 per year, $15,000 per year. Uh, so it's an extremely cheap course. To put that into perspective, um, students are going to earn a minimum of something just a bit over $11,000 in the internship in each year. So just with the internship alone, it's only about three and a half thousand dollars difference between the tuition fees and what they earn in the internship. Then if you add in their part-time work that they're going to do, they earn significantly more than the, the, the course costs. Basically, we've worked it out that um, students can pretty much afford their living expense and their tuition with the money that they'll make from part-time work and internships. So it's a, it's a, a very, very sharply priced course. Um, giving students a qualification from a world-renowned Swiss hotel management school um, with the opportunity to pa package with a bachelor's degree. Um, it, it really is a very, very unique program. And um, we only launched it, um, we launched it about a week before session one started, um, but it's already proving to be uh, one of our, our most popular courses. So um, yeah, this is a really exciting one. and. Um, we uh, yeah, are sure that it's going to um, resonate very well with our international student cohort. Uh, Sam, over to yeah, you. Thank, thanks, Tim. So um, just a bit, uh, just very quickly, just uh, running through the application process. So um, it's it's a very you know straightforward process, like you know application form, you know certified uh, supporting documents uh, with with all other applications. So um, I think certain level two countries like if you have applicants from um, Malaysia, Philippines, um, they do need to complete the statement of purpose though and um, a GTE form. Um, the re but it's very simple and we don't need to do any sort of GT interview and we don't ask for financial documents as well. So, but um, if you have any further uh, questions about this application process, um, please definitely reach out to um, your yes education um, manager and then they can um, they can advise you further on what documents are needed for the application and just to show you a very quick snapshot of um, the fees that um, we, we are, I'm not going to go through each one but um, what you can see here is that for example the bachelor course okay every year each year our tuition fees is twenty seven thousand six hundred. The master's, the postgraduate course is 26,400. So um, it's very, very uh, reasonably priced, especially when you take into account students can earn, you know, um, 15,000, minimum 15,000 doing the six months internship. And particularly for the IHTMP, the Swiss course that Tim just covered, in two years, even though the, tu the students will spend 30000 for tuition fees. But uh, if you take into account the money that they earn from the internship, 10 months internship, they are actually um, earning, and if you take into account part-time or casual work, they're actually earning more than they pay for the tuition fees. It's unbelievable. But the best, best advantage for these students, they are not just earning money. They are... Uh, you know, gaining the experience and building their CV at the same time. So this is why our employment um, statistics are so high. Yeah. So um, I think next we're going to just talk about the scholarships. Yeah. Do you want to uh, talk about scholarships and then I'll do a quick summary um, Yeah. before we go on to the Q&A. Sure, Sam. Um, so scholarships, there's a... Um, uh, number of different scholarship options that are available. We don't generally offer huge scholarships, um, but we, we have um, scholarships available. So um, one of the set scholarships that we have for all students is 10% um, off the duration of the course if they apply for the Brisbane campus in either session two or session three this year. So that's off the entire um, duration of the program. Um, so the value of that is up to about $8,000. Uh, for that particular scholarship. Um, but then we have um, a scholarship fund that we call the Innovation Scholarship. Um, and this is a, a scholarship um, which we can offer at different values. Essentially what we want to try and use this scholarship for is for students who you think are really high potential quality students who are close to, a, um, close to accepting an offer. Um, you can contact your Yes Education Manager um, and speak to them 
um, and we can we can work together to create a bespoke scholarship offer um, to try and assist you in converting students. So um, this uh, might range, there might be smaller scholarship values sort of range in value from about $2,000 to about $8,000 in terms of scholarship. As Sam already said, we think that our course presents excellent value because of the access that we give students to part-time employment, because of the paid internships, because of the reasonable tuition fees for a, in terms of a public university. Um, so we don't use, um, we don't offer, you know, 50% scholarships, that sort of thing. Um, but if you need uh, a scholarship to assist you to convert a particular student, we are more than happy to do that. And we're more than happy to offer scholarships for session two um, to try and incentivize students um, to uh, commence uh, their studies online with us. Um, thank you, Tim. I think I might just um, do a very quick summary um, before we open up um, for any questions. So um, our courses, um, you know, um, the hotel school, I just wanted to say that the hotel school, as Tim mentioned earlier, we are not a cooking school, we're not a culinary school. So um, we don't focus on operational skills like how to set the table, you know, we don't teach you things like that. We, our, our courses, um, we are focused on business and management. So as I mentioned earlier, our master's is really like an MBA, you know, our bachelor's, you know, is business program. So in fact, um, if you have any students who are, you know, thinking about not just studying hospitality and tourism, those students who are considering to study a business course, um, this is a really good option for them because it is a springboard into career, into other careers, um, not only in hotel, but as you have seen earlier, into airlines, into tourism, into banks, into, um, you know, like any anywhere that the that you have um, sales and marketing, human resource, customer service, public relations, events management. So it is a springboard to so many more careers. And I think what makes us so outstanding from all these other universities, um, you know, and all these courses is the fact that we don't just focus on academic theor theory. Um, we are so much focused on practical learning. You can see from our internships, six months internships, the compulsory subject that we teach students A to Z, how to get the job. You know, and I'm sure most of you um, will agree with me that, you know, even though, you know, most of the economies are very badly affected during this time, but next year, when the economy starts to recover, no matter which country you are in, and when there are jobs the competition will be so much more intense. Maybe you have one job, 200 applicants. So the key is, how do you stand out uh, from the crowd? What difference do you have? What advantage do you have to offer that other people don't? Is it just a piece of paper um, saying you graduate from XYZ University? So this is our difference. And this is what makes hotel school so outstanding. Um, because of our practical learning, because our, of our job ready skills, and because of our work internships. So um, we really hope you can um, help us to promote the hotel school um, in your respective markets. And please, you know, reach out to your Yes Education managers if you have any questions um, or about uh, the application documents. So um, I think we have come to the end except the question and answer. Yeah. Right, okay. Thank you so much, Tim and Samantha. Okay, now we come to the Q&A session. Uh, are there any questions? <laughs> Everyone, if you have any question, you can either type it in the chat box, or if you want to speak out, I can unmute you, whichever convenient for you. Perhaps I can start with my question first. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, yes, I have a question here. Um, if a student completes a, say for example, a diploma or bachelor qualification, say in Malaysia, where it's conducted in English entirely the course, so does the student still need to provide IELTS when it comes to hotel school? Um, yes, unfortunately they do because, um, because of the fact that uh, Malaysia is uh, currently under level two at the moment, so they mm -hmm. still need to um, have an IELTS. Um, but the good thing, the good news is that um, we don't, we can accept um, other forms of English testing. For example, um, there are a few other online uh, modes of English tests, such as the TOEFL, IBT, uh, PTE, 
uh, I think um, we need to confirm, but I think a uh, Duolingo as well. So um, I this one I will confirm, but there are other modes of testing that the student can choose to do if they don't want to take IELTS. But, um, but yes, the, the question, answer to your question is they do need to um, show okay. up of English proficiency. Yeah. Right, okay. Is that, uh, if the student like to seek for a uh, English placement test, do you? Um, English placement test, um, they can't. You have that sort of arrangement in place, uh, school. Yeah, so English they can't school, do, uh, so I think there's a question, so what about um, CAE? Yeah, um, at the top of my head, I think we do accept like CAE. Uh, I'm not sure about first certificate, I think we do, but um, Wayne, I can send you the link to, to SEU. And it shows okay. you different types of English proficiency tests that um, uh, we accept, and also the the scores, the the, the corresponding scores. Um, let's say for bachelor six point zero. So what are the corresponding scores? So um, mm -hmm. there are options for that. But um, if we have students from level one countries, for example, um, I know like uh, say Singapore or Taiwan, mm -hmm. absolutely yes. they can also do the English placement test as well. But when you do the English placement test. Um, students will be expected to study at least 10 weeks of English. So you can't do a placement test and expect to waive the to understood. Yeah. Right. So regardless the, the, the result of the English placement test, the minimum duration they need to study is 10 weeks at least. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank right. You. Okay. Got it. Uh, uh, my next question is, uh, so um, Tim mentioned that the online course for diploma grads uh, can be 100% study online without coming to Australia. Is, is that correct? Is that what I, my understanding yes. is correct, Tim? Yeah. Okay. What about the internship arrangement within the, the course? So um, the, the reason that those courses are available um, complete to, to complete entirely online is the diploma doesn't have an internship. It's the bachelor that has right. an internship. Um, the master okay. does have an internship. So there are options though. So the students can either do um, alternative electives apart from the internship, or they can do an internship in the country that they're in. So it depends on the, the, the situation of the students. We think that a lot of those students will already be working that want to do these particular courses fully online. Otherwise, they most probably would like to come to Australia. Um, so they can arrange to do the internship and we can give them guidance and support in terms of um, getting an internship um, overseas as well. Depending on the country that they're in, um, we, we, we may have connections as well. Otherwise, we can um, help to connect them, um, uh, help them to find an internship op opportunity themselves. But you can complete all of those courses without doing an internship. It's right. the IHTMP and the bachelors where the intern internship is mandatory and the students have to do it. Um, for the right. most Every single student that does a master's with us in Australia will do an internship and we have plenty of internships for them to do. But if mm -hmm. they wanted to, for whatever reason, they could do the course without doing an internship. Right, okay. So for this course, uh, for, for the 100% can, can study online, uh, are those courses has been running for a while or just started to run uh, since the COVID-19? Um, so they've just started to run since the COVID-19. So um, the... The, the way that they came about is um, we received such positive feedback from students about right. what we were delivering on um, that we thought it's something that we want to continue even post COVID. Uh, so um, we decided to, to, to make those programs that we could fully available um, online mm -hmm. for the of the course. So um, we've always been able to deliver the courses in a different model um, online. So yes have been able okay. to enrol in a fully online course from, from us through Southern Cross University uh, for, for a long time. Um, but it's this new delivery model that we're, we, we put the courses into, which offer a, a, a much greater level of support um, for the students, and it's a lot easier for them to progress through. Right. What about in terms of tuition fee? Would, uh, does it make a difference compared to face-to-face? -face? No, um, it's uh, the same tuition fee. Actually, our cost of delivering a unit is slightly increased um, because of the right. way we're delivering it online. Um, but we understand the 
the perception in the market is normally that an online course is cheaper. And I can understand yeah. that <laughs> to have lecturers and things like that. But we're still, our lecturers are actually more available for students in the online course than they are in the face-to-face -face delivery mode. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, so we've still got the same sort of teaching costs. Um, so yeah. yeah, our cost for delivering the unit is, is actually higher, but, but we've, the fees are the same. Um, we understand that that's not what the market perception is at the moment. So yeah. I can't reduce the cost of the, the, the program, but we can offer scholarships to try and offset, um, you know, maybe that the difference in perception um, that it should be slightly cheaper. But we think that once students understand actually how we're teaching and the way that it's being delivered, um, that mm -hmm. they'll, they'll be accepting of that. We've got we've got a, a small number of enrolments. We've only started to market those online, purely online courses about uh, right. a week ago, and we've we've, we've got some. Oh, more, okay. Which is good. Yeah, where where do come where do they come from? If I don't if if I don't mind asking, where do those students come from? The small number uh, of enrolment. So so far, we've got um, I think we've got about five um, students who are confirmed from Nepal. A couple of students from Vietnam. Right. Um, okay. We're getting a little bit of interest from Japan. Okay, uh, great. Um, yeah, we're, we we think from from China as well. There might be a little bit of interest in that. So, as I say, it's only been um, we've only been sort of a, a soft release of the the programs um, about a week ago, maybe ten days now. Um, sure. Starting to get some positive feedback, which is good. Okay, right. Not a bad result. Okay, that's good. Uh, my next question is, uh, among the Southeast Asia regions, uh, which country do you get most of your students from? Um, so, uh, I guess our strategic markets in Southeast Asia would be um, Indonesia, Vietnam. Um, we're, we're really keen on developing more in Malaysia. That's where Sam's sort of taken over that market as one of our senior regional managers. Um, yep. Singapore, Sam, Sam was based in Singapore up until a couple mm -hmm. of months ago. So she, um, she was getting us a couple of students from, from there. Um, where else am I forgetting in Southeast? Uh, Philippines as well. Philippines, yes. Oh, yeah. Philippines. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So they're, they're where we probably get most of our students from, from Southeast Asia. Um, but as I said, we've got a, a pretty decent spread of students um, from uh, a lot of, I mean, we, we do, we don't have a huge number of Indian students. We've got a good number from Nepal. Um, right. Um, and then also Europe and um, Latin America, we started to do better in over the last 10 months as well. So it's a real nice, diverse international student body. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So our next question, uh, approximately how many uh, international students now across your three campuses? Just the rough numbers. Uh, it's around about around about eight hundred international students across all three right. classes. Mm -hmm. um, That's great. And we're, and we're about six or seven hundred um, domestic students at the moment. So it's about fifty fifty more or it's less. It's only about fifty fifty. It depends session to session. Um, it, it changes slightly, um, but yeah, it's it's, it's, a, it's around about fifty fifty most of the time. Excellent. Right. Uh, are there any more questions, uh, guys? Mm. That's all the questions I have here today. Um, anything you want to share before we wrap up the, the training, team, team and Sam? Mm -hmm. um, firstly, a, a big thanks to you, Wayne, and, and to the team at Yes Education for setting this up. Um, Welcome. And then to, to all of your agents, um, I wanted to um, just again stress that, that we offer a, a quality product and that our main goal is to get students jobs. So if you send a student to the hotel school, you can know that they're going to have a successful career out of that, um, which, will, which will feed positive feedback. I know for agents sometimes um, you, you only hear, once you've sent the student to a particular university or school, you only hear if something goes wrong. Um, but we, we will feed back success stories of, of your students uh, through Yes Education to, to, to follow the timeline and to help you to, to recruit more students afterwards. So um, I, I can say this honestly, that we've got a good product. And the, the main thing that 
that students are interested in when they come and study hotel management education is a job. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. where we've got a massive advantage because we own you know, so many five-star hotels around the world. So please consider us um, and um, we won't let you down. And uh, yeah, thanks again, Wayne. Yeah, I suppose uh, Sam, Sam picked up uh, a good point just now whereby the uh, next year when the COVID-19 becomes stable, uh, the business started to pick up. Uh, obviously, expectable there will be, say, for example, one position open for, <laughs> there will be 200 people apply for the same position. So graduate from a top school, hotel school, will be a definitely a, make you stand out in the crowd. There's no doubt oh, about it. It's a practical experience that you have from the hotel school. That's right. And, on, uh, and also just the simple fact that we will employ our own graduates before we employ a graduate from any other hotel school because... Um, we obviously want <laughs> that makes sense. our own yeah. school. So, you know, that, that, that just makes sense. We will mm -hmm. give jobs first and foremost to our students um, before we look yeah. at other school around the world. So, um, yeah, yeah, our students will be in a, in, a, in a really advantageous spot. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Thank you, right. Wayne. Yeah. Thank you, Wayne, and, thank you uh, so for organising this. And thank you to the team. And, yeah. So, um, if, you have, if your agents have any questions, please reach out to your Yes Education uh, Manager again. And, and yes, um, I think um, finally, I just say that again, like, you know, the hotel school courses is really business and management based. It's really, really a springboard to all these different, different career opportunities, especially, you know, next year, you know, um, to help the students get a job. So, um, yeah, please let uh, your manager know if they have any questions and we hope to receive your application soon. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yep. so, okay. Thank you guys. So to sum up, okay, once again, thank you very much for your time today. So uh, we will share out the uh, PPT slide and the recorded uh, training Zoom link to everyone after that. And we will keep you posted for our next uh, webinar training. And thank, thank you guys. Thanks, Samantha. Thank, thanks, team. So we will be in touch. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Wayne. Right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.